What's going on guys, Victor here with another video and the follow up from my previous one where I was talking about the UFC 261, how it was a full success, how we had 15,000 plus in the crowd and how the fights were absolutely amazing. I gotta talk about an incident that took place during UFC 261 that could have made the event go south very, very fast. I'm talking about Daniel Cormier confronting a Jake Paul at UFC 261. And just when I thought that I hadn't seen the impossible happen, Jake Paul has gotten underneath the skin of everyone inside of the UFC. Not, not only Dana White, but also one of the key pieces within the franchise of the UFC. A key contributor, one of the hardest workers that the UFC has. He's an analyst. He's a commentator. He's a former double champ. I'm talking about Daniel Cormier, DC. DC. I never thought in my whole entire life that DC would let someone such as Jay Paul get underneath his skin. And as we all know, Daniel Cormier, it doesn't get any more professional than Daniel Cormier. He's a very professional human being. He does everything to the best of his abilities. Until he's with Joe Rogan and he kind of does start screwing up and starts being biased and everything like that. But Daniel Cormier is not always biased. He just tends to follow a lot of Joe Rogan's... Basically tends to go with the flow with Joe Rogan whenever Co Joe Rogan is basically commentating during pay-per-views. So whenever Joe Rogan says he likes someone, Daniel Cormier is most likely going to say it 80% of the times. Not all the time, but mostly 80% of the times. But... Like I said, Jake Paul was in attendance. As soon as DC saw him there, he got in his face right off the bat. Security was in there full force, making sure that a physical confrontation would not happen. Now, if you guys are thinking the same thing as me, why would DC let this punk get in his head? Why would DC let a loser who's a YouTuber get inside of his head? He's a two-division world champion with the UFC. He's a future Hall of Famer, a former Olympic wrestler, a former wrestler with the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Someone who's so professional as that. How can he let someone, a kid, because Daniel Cormier can pretty much be Jake Paul's father. You know, believe me or not. How can he let someone like that get inside of his head? And Daniel Cormier was this close, this close to smacking him. And even during the UFC 261 event, Daniel Cormier got out of character when Joe Rogan had revealed that a chant during the UFC 261 event was that the crowd was chanting F Jake Paul. As soon as Daniel Cormier said that, he said, Joe, I swear, man, I swear. I'm going to smack the crap out of this kid. I went over there. You know I don't play, Joe. And as soon as Joe Rogan heard that, he said, I know you don't play. But this, the thing about that, the thing that we need to remember is that most of us are born, we end up being products of our environments. The majority of the people out there, we can all change. And that's the truth. If there's one thing about Daniel Cormier is that he's changed over the past in order to become the best version of himself, in order to put himself up there in the upper, upper echelon of athletes in the history of this country, also in the history of mixed martial arts in general. Daniel Cormier isn't, he's, he's, not, he's not just a rich individual, but he's also got an interesting past. You see him with all these, with a very nice house in California, with a beautiful family, with a job that pays him a lot of money. He's got all these different businesses. Daniel Cormier did not always have that. Daniel Cormier did not always come from humble beginnings. He came from a very, very tough upbringing. He came from a tough environment. His family was a very loving one. There wasn't any problems within his family whatsoever, but it was where he was born, where he was grew up that made him who he is today. Daniel Cormier is not the type of individual that'll take smack from anybody. Why do you think he pushed John Jones and got in that physical confrontation during that face-off all those years ago? He's from Lafayette, Louisiana. He's not the only one that, he's not the only one from there that is a product of his environment. Dustin Poirier at the same time. You guys remember how Dustin Poirier didn't take any smack from anyone. He would always get in your face and almost get in these physical confrontations and how overheated 
he would get because he would overreact to pretty much anything that any type of smack talk would come towards his way. The, th the same thing was with Daniel Cormier back in the day as well. Lafayette, Louisiana is one of the most dangerous places to grow up in the state of Louisiana. Also, the state of Louisiana isn't an easy place to live in at all. Not everybody in the state has the same opportunities as one another. A lot of people have to work twice as hard as others in order to be able to feed their families, in order to be able to live the life that they want to be living in. Daniel Cormier was one of these individuals. His family didn't have a lot of money growing up. He lived in a very tough environment. So in order to get out of that environment that was very rough, that was pretty much volatile within the city because of all the, the, the crime and the, and the deaths and the murders, he needed to get out of there. And for that to happen, he devoted his life to sports. He started playing football, then he started wrestling. He got that scholarship to Oklahoma State University. He almost made it into the Olympics. Started doing MMA that changed his life forever. Became a multiple time champion. And now he's at where he's at now he's at where he's at right now. So don't be surprised that he threatened Jake Paul and told him that he was gonna smack him or punch him or whatever because He's a product of his environment. You can't take the Louisiana out of Daniel Cormier. Even though he's this successful, he's this professional. If someone pushes your button to the point of no return, then you're going to revert to your old self no matter what. No matter how far, how far away you've been from that type of environment, how long you've been away from home, from where you grew up. The Louisiana can be taken out of Daniel Cormier at any moment any movement, that frustration, that angriness, the the toughness of that La Lafayette, Louisiana boy from all the way back then is always going to be inside of Daniel Cormier. So if you get in his face, just like John Jones did that one time, just like this incident at UFC 261, don't be surprised if Daniel Cormier smacks the crap out of you because Lafayette, Louisiana is just as bad as Stockton over in California. It's just as bad as the streets of Miami. So don't be surprised if Daniel Cormier gets into these type of conversation, uh, confront, confrontations because he's still a Louisiana boy on the inside. He's from Lafayette, Louisiana. You can't take the toughness out of him. You can't change the fact that he's a product of his environment. Even though that he's changed, he's still got that inside of here. And if someone out there that's as ignorant as Jake Paul basically talks all this smack and starts playing with Daniel Cormier. When Daniel Cormier says he doesn't play around, it's the absolute truth. If, if Daniel Cormier says, if you get in my face, I'm going to do something about it, he's going to do something about it. Like I said, don't let the fact that he's a commentator, he's made all these millions of dollars for you. Daniel Cormier is still the real deal, and he's no one to be messed with, no matter what. So Jake Paul, I just wanted to let you guys know how someone such as Daniel Cormier got in, in a conversation with a young guy such as Jake Paul is about, I think, 22, 23, and Daniel Cormier is about 42 or 40 year, 41 years old because of his upbringing, because of the environment that he grew in, uh, grew up into. That's never going to leave his life. And when someone like that who talks all that smack and gets in your grill and uh, really, really gets you heated up, the, Lu the Louisiana inside of, uh, inside of D.C. is definitely it's going to pop off, and it popped off at UFC 261. So it's not going to be rare to see D.C. getting those type of confrontations in the future because that's just who he is. He can't help it sometimes because he got in many of those in Lafayette, Louisiana, just like Dustin Poirier. If someone t starts talking crap and starts getting in, your, uh, in, his, in, in his ear and stuff like that, then... Like I said, Dustin, Dustin, the, the, Louisiana and Dustin is going to pop off as well. You can't, and the same thing with Masvidal, you know. Leon Edwards, who was talking crap, and he basically brought the Miami right out of Jorge Masvidal. You know, the streets and everything, you know, the street fights that Jorge Masvidal used to get into. You, Jorge, Jorge Masvidal used to get triggered really easily. But obviously, since he became a, prof a professional mixed martial artist, it had changed a little bit. They had gone away. But because of a couple words that Leon Edwards said, that street fighter, that aggressiveness, that toughness, that angriness came out of Masvidal for a good 20 to 30 minutes. So no matter what happens, you're always going to be a product of your environment no matter where you grow up. 
and it can be brought back out of you no matter how much you change in the future. And that incident, UFC 261 with DC, was a perfect example of it. It's not a bad thing, it's a good thing because you never want to forget about where you came from. You don't really want to forget about where you came from, where your roots are from, because that is what always got you to the point in your life right now. So I appreciate you guys for watching this video. I just want to share that information about DC and how someone such as him can be getting, how, how he could be reeled in so easily by Jake Paul into that confront, uh, confrontation, basically giving Jake Paul more clout, more leeway, and more attention. But it is what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys dislike Jake Paul as much as I do because, like I said, hopefully he gets knocked out in the future, just like Dana White has said. But we'll see how long this ride is going to last for him and... Yeah, it is what it is, just like Max Holloway usually says. But appreciate you guys for watching this video. Stay safe, stay blessed. We're almost out of this pandemic, like I said in the previous video. Later, guys.